Disclaimer. Please forgive me now for there may be mispronunciations in this video. In the region of Schaumburg, Germany, there are werewolves called the Boxing Wolves. It is believed that they have made a pact with Satan that allows them to achieve the transformation into wolves by the act of buckling a diabolical strap about their waist. Boxing Wolves are noted for their cunning and great delight they receive for tormenting people. If one suspects an individual of being leagued with Satan, a secret Boxing Wolf, his or her true identity can be revealed by holding a piece of steel over them. Once in their wolfish form, they gain superhuman strength. The boxing wolves are nightmares to travelers. One evening, the werewolf came across two peasants carrying bags of flour. They were returning home from a mill not too far from Rintil. The boxing wolf showed up and confronted one of them. The peasant immediately cried out for help to his companion. His companion threw his bag to the side and beat the boxing wolf with his walking stick. The injured werewolf turned and ran away. The next day, the two peasants visited another peasant they knew of whom they suspected was the annoying boxing wolf, because he was mysteriously wealthy and no one knew where the source of his riches came from. The suspect was laying in bed, deathly ill due to his previous injuries. He had the surgeon come in and bind his wounds, thus discovering that he was in fact the boxing wolf. According to old records, around 1640, the German city of Greifswald became overrun with werewolves. The world population apparently became so large that they literally took over the city. Any human who ventured out after dark was in danger of being attacked and killed by a number of werewolves. A group of students decided that they had enough of living in fear and staying indoors at night. One night, they banded together and led a charge against the monsters. They were helpless against the powerful werewolves. But then, a lad suggested they gather all their silver buttons, goblets, belt buckles, and so forth and melt them down into bullets for their muskets and pistols. Thus, reinforced, the students set out once again to challenge the dominance of the werewolves, and this time they saw the creatures and rid Greifswald of the werewolves. Gilbert was the abbot of a monastery in the banks of Ura, France, who had one day indulged himself on riding into the village to attend a fair. While there, he drank too many glasses of good French wine. As he rode home to the monastery, the effects of the wine and the warm sun made him groggy, and he fell from his saddle. After the shock of the fall, Abbot Gilbert realized that he had cut himself badly when he struck the ground. The scent had attracted a pack of wild cats. As they began to surround him, he crossed himself and awaited his demise. Just as the moment seemed at its darkest, a ferocious werewolf appeared and attacked the cats with his flashing fangs and savage claws. The creatures were driven off, but the werewolf received a number of bloody wounds. Gilbert did not dare approach the werewolf for fear the monster might turn on him, so he managed to get back into the saddle and spur his horse back to the monastery. The werewolf followed him right up to a waiting group of monks who eagerly dressed the beast's wounds after they heard of Abbot Gilbert's frightening encounter and daring escape. The next morning, Gilbert and his fellow monks were astonished to see the werewolf had resumed its normal human shape, and that it was a personally a very well-known high-ranking official of the church. Then, to Gilbert's humiliation, the dignitary proceeded to give a severe tongue lashing for having himself wine that day. The werewolf ordered the abbot to do such a harsh penance that he resigned his position and left the monastery. North Emberland County, Pennsylvania during 1899, many residents had suspicions of an older man being a werewolf, but that didn't bother the Paul family until they became uneasy when they noticed that the old fellow had taken an apparent liking to their 12-year-old daughter, May. He was never seen doing anything indecent, but it still felt strange for them when he would sit at a distance and watch May as she tended to the family's sheep. From all they could make certain, he never spoke to her or disturbed her duties in any manner. While the other shepherds had to worry about bold wolves in the area that would attack their flocks of sheep during the daylight, they never seemed to bother the sheep of little May. Some had witnessed the wolves approaching her flock but would turn and run away. This escalated the talk about the old man being a werewolf that could frighten normal wolves away. One night when the moon was full, 
a hunter spotted a gaunt old wolf walking out of the underbrush and preparing to cross the road. Thinking about the bounty on wolves, he took aim and fired. The wolf let out a yelp of pain and staggered back into the thicket. Thinking it was too dark to pursue the wounded animal, the hunter went home, planning to return during the day. The next morning, he returned to the area and followed the trail of blood, expecting fully to find a carcass of a wolf. But instead, he found the body of an elderly man lying stiff and cold. According to regional tradition, he was buried on the spot, which became known as the wolf man's grave. Maypaw continued to tend her family's flocks of sheep for the next 25 years. Although wolves and other predators continued to harass the flocks of neighbors' farmers, May's sheep were never troubled. She claimed the spirit of the werewolf protector still watched over her and drove away the beasts. Ancient Greek historian Herodotus devoted much study in separating myth from fact, including the tales of shamanic practices of the Nori tribe of Scythia which is a part of eastern Poland today. Around 450 BC, he reported that the Nori are sorcerers and that each Norian changes himself for a couple of days once a year into a form of a wolf. He is not speaking singular when mentioning this tribe, but of the entire tribe itself. Four centuries later, around 43 AD, the Roman geographer Pompinius Mile verified Herodotus story by saying, there is a fixed time for each Norian at which they change, if they like, into wolves, and back again into their former condition. If they like, shows that the Norians were not cursed or under a spell, but could change themselves at certain times of the year upon whim. Herodias didn't believe in these transformations and found them impossible, but couldn't deny the seriousness of the belief that both neighboring tribes of Scythians and Greeks were living there. What do you think? Did you like this video? Want to support this channel? Feel free to check out my Patreon page where I create content on cryptids, hauntings, serious killers, alien abductions, and much more. Can't support me there? Like, comment, and subscribe here.